When we started documenting our journey, we made a commitment to ourselves that we would keep doing this as long as it makes sense for us and for our family. We're still very passionate about kind of where we're going. We still have a lot of work and a lot of projects that we want to get done. The problem is life has changed for us. The good news is it's changed for the better. Our life is better now, but unfortunately it's required a tremendous amount of adjusting. So I think the question is, is pure living for life dead? The answer is yeah. Yeah, it's basically dead. Peer Living for Life was always Jesse and Alyssa, Jesse and Alyssa, and we were workhorses. The amount of work that we got done in a day was just incredible, like mind boggling. But life isn't that way for us anymore, and we're happy about it. We're actually happy with where we are, but it's going to require some adjusting, and we've already been adjusting, and we're going to continue adjusting, very likely for the rest of our lives. But what we do want to do is continue documenting this journey, and our commitment commitment to that is exactly the same. We'll just keep doing what we've been doing so long as it makes sense for us and for our family. Thankfully, over the past several years, we have made some really wise and good decisions and we've avoided debt. We've been able to do everything we've done so far without incurring any debt and that puts us in a really great spot, both mentally and financially. We're actually super excited for the coming year. We feel like last year was kind of an adjustment year and we've got a lot of projects in the queue. Some of them we've been waiting on and we've had to kind of be patient because things don't happen right away. Other projects we've been sitting on. We just haven't had the time or the space to work on them. So we're looking forward to this year. We've got a lot to do and we're super excited to be working on all of that. Unfortunately, our channel is not immune to the effects of the current situation. So even though we have a lot of projects and things that we're working on and we have a lot of work to get done this year, things are going to have to change on the channel. We're going to keep working. We want to be working, so we're going to keep doing that and we're going to keep documenting the projects just like we always have. But unfortunately, we're going to be in a position where we won't be able to share some of those projects until things change on YouTube. This is super Super unfortunate, we get it, because so many people are looking for positive and uplifting things to watch right now. But unfortunately, it just doesn't make sense for us to publish some of these videos, even if we're super excited to share them. We've always been fiercely independent about funding our journey, and that has not changed. To this day, our content is still free to watch on YouTube. Unfortunately, it's not free to create, and without the support of advertisers helping to fund the content, it doesn't make sense for us to justify the loss of income. We've already reached out to those who support us directly on Patreon and encouraged them to redirect their support to other folks who are in need. We're doing wonderful right now and we're looking for other people that we can support. Thankfully, there is some content that we're able to create with minimal time investment and minimal expense. And so we actually look forward to trying to share some of that between now and when things kind of get back to normal. We wanted to take a moment and just review a handful of ways that you can support your favorite creators right now. Some will be able to get support elsewhere. Some might be in a great position like we are and they don't need support, but I can assure you there are a lot of your favorite creators right now who are feeling the pinch of the economic situation. The first thing you can do is just watch YouTube. If you really truly appreciate these creators and you have a certain amount of time that you can dedicate to watching stuff each day, then spend your time watching their content. Don't give your time to Disney. Don't give your time to Netflix. They don't need your money. I mean they do, but these independent creators probably need it more than these corporations do. Even if that creator is not putting out new content, you could always go back and watch some of their older videos. On our channel, for example, we have our entire journey from the beginning, so there's a lot of wonderful videos that even we like to go back and watch. Your favorite creators very likely also have a library, so you can go back and watch some of their earlier videos, and that will still continue to support them. Number two, watch the ads. It's very likely that you're still seeing a large number of ads right now, but what has changed is on the creator side, and that is the revenue that is generated by those ads. We have seen a reduction as much as 50% currently in the last few weeks on our revenue, and the powers that be say we're probably not at the bottom yet. So some of those creators out there have taken over a 50% reduction in income, and that really hurts. 
If you're bored at home, maybe you're stuck at home or you're quarantined or whatever and you've got extra time, it's no big deal to let those ads run and the revenue generated from those ad impressions will go to the creator. Three, if you're one of those people who has an ad blocker installed, shame on you, first of all, for being a freeloader, but second of all, have a soul. Support the people who create the content that you enjoy. So if you can't stand the idea of supporting a creator when times are good, at least take a moment here, turn your ad blocker off and watch a few ads. Number four, if you're seeing a change in the frequency or the type of content that your favorite creators normally produce, be supportive anyway. They're probably doing the best they can and some people like us have to invest quite a bit in the content they create and it may not make sense for them to publish their very best content right now. So if you see something from them, try to support them anyway. At the end of the day, I think what I'm trying to say is just be happy we have any content available for free at all. Number five, if you're doing any shopping online, which a lot of people are doing right now, either because they're trying to avoid the markets or the stores, or your local store doesn't have what you need, so you're ordering online, try to order through an affiliate link. A lot of creators have accounts with places like Amazon, and if before you start shopping, you simply click their affiliate link and then you continue about your shopping, you don't have to pay an extra dime, but they get a small commission on whatever you buy. This is something you can do at no cost, it requires very little effort, and it's a way to support your creators. If you don't know if your favorite creator has an affiliate link, take a couple seconds, send them an email, just say, hey, I'd love to support you, I'm going to buy some stuff on Amazon, do you have a link that I can click? And remember, click the link before you start shopping, that's all you have to do. And number six, if by some chance in the current situation you are just rock solid financially, and you're kind of feeling generous and you want to support your creators, but you maybe don't do that right now directly, this would be a great time to reach out and ask if they have a Patreon or a PayPal or something like that or even a Venmo where you can send them support directly. Even if it's just temporary, this might be something that a creator could really benefit from right now and of course when things get better, you can always cancel that direct support and go back to doing whatever you were doing before. And finally, we want to find out how this stuff is affecting you. We feel like things are really kind of just up in the air. They're uncertain. Some people seem to be drastically affected. Other people seem to be fairly well insulated. I think the reality is we're all affected, but in different ways. So how is this affecting you? Is your retirement portfolio taking a hit? Have you already lost your employment? Maybe in the early wave of those who are either lost their job or they aren't allowed to come to work anymore or you're quarantined. How are these things actually affecting you, our community out there? We've actually found, because it's gardening season, that some of our favorite seed catalogs are not even selling seeds to non-commercial growers. So that puts a lot of us in a really hard spot because we plan on growing a garden this year and finding seeds to get started might be more challenging than we think. Maybe kind of share what things you're working on. If you're in quarantine or if you've been sent home or laid off or whatever, what projects are you working on? What are the constructive things that you're doing? What are the things that maybe you're doing to help your community, those in your circle? We feel like it's times like this when we really appreciate the value of the things that we have and we realize how much abundance is actually in our fairly small circles of influence. When we take an inventory of ourselves and our spouses and our friends and our family and our neighbors and our community, I think most of us will realize that we actually have a lot and we're doing really, really well. That doesn't make the struggle go away, but it's a good chance to take inventory and just realize how good most of our lives really are. So thank you to all of you who have been supporting us in one way or another along this journey. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll stick with us and we'll see you on the next video.